When you first look at game software, the impression you get is that every computer game is excitingly different. The packaging is great, it's glossy and grabby. Even the opening screens can look pretty inspiring. But when the game finally appears, you're usually hit by a sinking feeling of having seen it all before. That's because most games have developed from just a few classic themes. There's monster games like this one, where you run around bumping off critters or swallowing giant cherries. And there's the Space Invader theme, where you, move up, you shoot at f moving fleets of hostile aliens. Fairly boring. And then there's the more recent sports games. Well, sports games, to me, are perhaps the most appalling use of computers. Here it is. This is a decathlon. Well, doing a decathlon on a Commodore by wagging a joystick like this is really no substitute for going out and getting a spot of fresh air. Well, these sort of games might seem a bit of fun, but it's surprising how quickly even the most dedicated games addict gets bored with them. Many people find the answer in adventure games. They have a vast following and can present a real mental challenge. An adventure game puts you into a whole new world. It sets you a series of problems which you've got to solve in order to complete some quest. This one is called The Pawn. It's got some very neat graphics, as you see, and it can also cope with some rather complicated instructions. For example, here I told it, go north, take off wristband and wait. Well, it's uh, behaved as if it understood every word of it. We showed a version of this on the Atari ST last series, but there are now versions for the Amiga and even for the humble Commodore 64. Well, a good adventure game would keep you busy for days on end, be warned. You'd probably need to draw a map of the locations, because the geography, not to mention the strategy, can get pretty mind-boggling. Unfortunately, though, there are also some really naff adventure games around. You'd have more fun doing your tax returns. So, before you buy, read the reviews, or better still, ask an addict. The computer games that exercise the mind are often derived for, from what were uh, originally board games. For example, an inexpensive bit of software can now be a mean opponent at chess. Or, if you're a Scrabble freak, you can now keep in trim on your own. Believe it or not, this Spectrum version has actually got a vocabulary of 11,000 words. 11,000! That's about the same as the average adult. Despite that, when I put in the word stalk earlier this afternoon, it didn't understand what I meant queried it. Oh well. The machine will play the parts of several opponents, if you like. Well, up here we've got Mac and Leslie, they're not really playing this, I'm playing against the computer. And it has all the traditional features. For example, you can swap uh, letters, if you like, or you can juggle them about like this. It's quite nice. And there are, there are blanks and so on. Now let's enter a word. What can we have? There's a, uh, an X. Ah, ah, I've got one, I think. I don't know if I'm allowed this on television before. Nine o'clock, but what about S E X? Can I get away with that? It accepts it. It would score 18. Oh, yes, I'll definitely have that. Yes, please. Right. Word is accepted. Fair enough. Okay. Well, if that doesn't excite you, you can uh, always leave it playing on its own while you pop down the pub. And of course, now there's Trivial Pursuit. It's been taken to new heights with new questions. Well, new trivial questions, that is. They now include graphics and sound, but you are expected to be honest. Well, let's uh, press this button and off we go, see what we get. Uh, it, oh, it's going to be a science question, well, that might be a help. What are hardened mollusk secretions? Oh, my giddy aunt. I've no idea, but... OK, supposing I said they're a form of tea bag. I don't know. Pearls, did you get it right? Yes, I say, of course I did. And I win the point. Well, of course, it's really supposed to be played in a group. But I can't help thinking that this version would appeal to computer freaks rather more than trivial pursuit fanatics. Well, so much for board games. What about a creative arcade game? Is there such a thing? Yes, there is. This pinball construction set lets you design your own pinball machine. And you can even change things. Well, first of all, you play it like a conventional pinball, if you remember these things. Press the button and you scroll it and things bounce around and you can steer it around with the paddles. But if you get fed up with that one, you can change things. I'll move on to an option screen here. Now, what should we have? We'll move one of these items over. Pop that about there, I think, and perhaps one of these wedge shapes. Pick it up, put it over there. Right, let's try that. Oh, but first, I think I'll change some of the laws of nature. We'll move on to that which is supposed to represent the globe, the real world, and we can change, well, gravity if we like, make it a bit stronger. 
Uh, oh no, let's uh, let's make it a bit lighter. See what happens. And elasticity—that's the bounce of the ball. So we'll change that a bit. Pull that down, down here. Right, quit that. Back into play mode, which is that icon there. There it is. Now let's try that. Oh, you see, well, gravity really has reduced there. I'm playing this on the moon or something. Let's see if I can catch that ball next time it comes down. Ah, got it. Great stuff. And that'll bounce around. Should score quite well. So, even the old home micro can run good... Oh, shut up, will you? That's enough. Fine, thanks. Even the old home micro can run good games, but the newer machines, which have got more memory, better graphics and faster processing, can handle even smarter games. Have a look at this one. Marble Madness on the Amiga. Now, basically, this is a very simple game. All I've got to do is steer this marble around, up and down these ramps and over these surfaces here. So there's nothing special about that. But what does make this game special is these graphics. It takes a bit of a steady hand, but... Uh... Ah, got it there. Not too difficult, but the graphics are terrific. Real arcade quality. So, if you've never played a computer game, don't dismiss them. There are games for all mentalities. It's just that the good games are hidden behind a mass of crude shoot-em-ups.